So we're Hamel Road Software. We're a, a software development company in pre-press. We specialize in particular in digitally modulated screening. Um, if, I, if you'd like me to expand a little on that. Sure. Um, if you look at printing, you know, you've got the gamut going through from the range of from making your plates through to the printing presses. And if you look at the last 10 to 20 years, there's been significant improvements all along the, that, that range of products. Plates have gone from film to direct to plate, from chemistry to chem-free. CTPs have gone from 2400 to 4800. Uh, presses have gone with uh, automatic registration, uh, automatic color correction. But yeah, if you look at the actual technology that goes on the plate, it hardly has changed. And it's still the same technology almost from when Gutenberg invented printing. Uh, and it's really holding everything back. You don't get what you expect and what you want. So one of the things is we don't actually need on a, on a lithographic offset CTP, we don't need 4,800. We've developed some very sophisticated algorithms that actually maximize the use of 2,400 DPI. Uh, and I think that's the power of software. Uh, uh, that's the power of the modern computers we have. If you look at what you can do on a current Intel i7, i9, uh, it's uh, you know, 100 times more powerful than the computer you had 10 years ago. And I think there's a lot there that you can utilize if you put your mind to it, which is exactly what we've done. It is, uh, and in that respect, it's a little difficult to explain. Um, so if I try to relate it to what people know, if you look at AM screening, it's, it's stable. Okay, it has some issues like Moiré, but it, it's stable, it uses big dots. In comparison, if you look at FM, they use much smaller dots, and those smaller dots are not stable. So we've gone for a dot shape that's bigger, but stable, it's still small. And we've done that by actually restricting it in one dimension. So we've actually pioneered rectangular dots. And a rectangular dot, it, uh, it limits the ink film thickness in one direction, but it still has an area that means you get a stable dot. And that's one of the incredible things with, with, our, with our DM screening. You don't just, you almost get the quality for free. Uh, you know, you get your 400 to 600 LPI without the issues of Moiré, but it effectively doesn't cost you because inherent in the technology, it restricts the ink film thickness, which means that we more efficiently filter light, which means you can use less ink to achieve the same color. Uh, and our customers are seeing in excess of 10% ink savings. several times over. Uh, I mean, if, if you have a printer who, let's say, spends 10 million euros or dollars a year on ink, uh, we would expect them to save 10% uh, of that at least. Uh, and that's just in ink alone. In addition to a 10% saving in ink, we get a 10% saving in water. So you take your water levels down. It's much, the dots are much more controllable, so you use less water. Because you're putting less ink and less water, if you're a heat set printer, it dries quicker. So in your closed loop drying system, which is typically driven with gas, uh, you need let to you know, use less gas to, to, dry the, to dry the ink on the paper. Well, I think on the dentistries, we would, we would normally match what someone's currently printing. Okay. So if somebody is hitting ISO standards for density, they would hit exactly the same solid ink densities. And, and we would use a, a dot gain curve or a press curve to achieve uh, so that a 50 will gain to 69, 70%, depending on which ISO standard they're aiming to, to achieve. But in achieving that color, they can lower their waters and, uh, and lower their inks. Uh, and that, you know, when we train a new customer, the first thing we do is tell their press operators, take your ink down, your water down by 10 to 20, uh, by 10%, uh, and, and keep, you know, drive your, your ink levels down as well. The other thing about our, our DM screening is, uh, I say we use rectangular dots, and we minimize, for example, the number of little internal corners. And it means we have dots where you've got really good ink water balance. So when, when you have uh, something like an FM screen, where you have swirls, and the swirls actually have little staircases around the corners, and there you're fighting ink water balance and you have a lot of gain, and you have issues where the horizontal parts of your swirls have good ink water balance, but the corners have terrible ink water balance. This may not gain, this can fatten up. 
and that leads to an inconsistency. Because we have the same consistent dots, not only is it good ink water balance on all the dots, but, but as I just said, they're, they're consistent. We had a, a customer in Singapore who was using FM to do hexachrome. And he said that his biggest issue was registration. And if he got slightly out of register, he had a color shift. And in fact, I can actually prove mathematically and physically that if you do a five micron misregister with FM of C C M Y K, you'll actually get a color shift. Um, so, and in fact, if you misregister with uh, FM screening, and I don't want to name a brand, you actually get smoother results. So, you know, how do you tell your press guy, I want you to slightly misregister because it will improve the quality? Or you have a, a bad press operator who misregisters and prints you know, fairly well, then the next week your best press operator is on press, he gets perfect register, and you're now sending the customer something that looks noisy. That's just crazy, but I can prove it mathematically. With AM screening, it's well known that if you misregister, you go from a clear centered rosette to a dot centered rosette. A clear centered rosette is a soft, uh, gives a soft result. A dot centered rosette is a harder, bittier result. And if you do that, you get a color shift and you get what I call a noise shift from a soft to a hard centered rosette. With, with our DM technology, and it's the same whether it's Litho or Flexo or Aya or Bellissima, we actually interleave the dots. And that gives us two benefits. First of all, it reduces noise. So the reason we can make smooth browns is because of the way we interleave the dots. And we call that a stochastic rosette. And we have two patents on that, two US patents. The second thing is this interleaving is what gives us no color shifts when we misregister. So our DM screening is much more forgiving on misregistration. So moire is, is uh, an interesting topic. Uh, it's it plagued the industry on and off uh, for decades. Uh, a good printer who's got everything under control can pretend, you know, can minimize it, but you know, it can still rear its head. Uh, and you know, it's not difficult to have an unhappy customer if you don't pick it up. So one of the interesting things I think for me with, with uh, and I'll say this jokingly, with, with Aurea, is you know, we, we have heat set customers and they have young press operators who they em employ they train and will start using Aurea. These young press operators will grow up never knowing what a moire is. Now, isn't that sad? You know, we need to have a funeral for, for Mr. Moire because he no longer exists. We never get screen moire, we never get content moire. You can print chef's uniforms, uh, Scottish uh, tartan cloths, you know, the worst nightmare. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, clothing catalogues is a perfect application. Not only do we get the detail to show the cloths, the weaves, the stitching. Uh, we get the smooth colors on your browns, on your leathers, um, but there's no content worry. And you don't suddenly see a shirt that just looks, you know. We provide it on a, on a service model. At the end of the day, our customers, we know they save money. And if, you know, as I mentioned a printer, 10 million ink spend will save a million dollars. If we charge them less, you know, something less than that, then clearly they're making money. They're actually having less press issues. We also hear they run their presses faster, so they actually run more jobs, um, and they get the quality then almost for free. Um, so our, our sales model is on, a, on, a, on an annual pricing, or in some cases, even a job-based pricing. We're sensitive to different pricing levels in different markets, um, but we're aiming for our customers to, make, to save more money than we get paid, which obviously they're, they're very happy about. That pricing also gets them everything included. So it gets them all the support, all the training, uh, it gets them the upgrades. So every time we improve things, they get a new release or we make available uh, a new release to them. So you know, that is actually one of our biggest issues. A lot of our customers will not allow us to tell people they're using it. In fact, some of our customers actually put in the contract, we're not allowed to mention their name, and in fact, in some contracts, we actually have penalties if we mention their name. We're absolutely forbidden. We're under NDA. And the simple reason is they don't want their competitors to know how they're doing it. Uh, they don't want their customers to know um, how they're doing it. They, 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 they want to get a competitive edge. And, and we have customers winning 
very sizable uh, print contracts based on, on the quality of what we do. So it's really tough. You know, I mean, I, I have spoken to, for example, some major print uh, heat set print groups around the world. And when I phone them up and I say, well, we've got this fantastic product, it can actually improve your quality, it can actually improve your bottom line, great ROI, save you money. Their first question is, who's using it? I then, for example, say, well, uh, there are millions of magazines a day in certain countries being printed with our software. So who's the printer that's printing the millions of magazines? I can't tell you. Okay. Um, and you know, it, and, and it, it, it is so frustrating that you know, if, if we could announce who some of our big customers are, I think almost every single major print group around the world would be knocking on our door. Well, it's actually a lot easier because we could sell our software for say $50,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars. But then they have to do a capex, you know, a capital expenditure they have to go to the finance department, they have to look at the ROI, it's a big cash outlay, and you know, margins are very tight, in, uh, especially in lithographic. Obviously in Flexo, uh, it's, a, it's a slightly more buoyant market that's growing. The LIFO market is, to, is declining in most sectors, and a lot of these companies, they have paper thin margins, they don't have a lot of cash in the bank. The thing with what we offer is actually it doesn't cost. If you save $1,000 a job a month, a week, a day, whatever it is, a thousand, let's say that as a, as a figure, and you are paying us, let's say, let's say half, okay, it's a nice simple number. So you know, you're actually making $500 more. The 500 you're paying us, it's not costing you, it's coming out of the thousand dollars you're saving. So you know, I think uh, it's, it's a model that when we say that to printers, they, 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 there's a little reaction initially because it's different, it's new. You know, they, they, they're used to spending $5,000 for a piece of software or $80,000 for an upgrade to a big workflow, for example. So when you say to them that over a year you maybe pay more, it's a, it takes a while to get their head around. But when you say that actually whatever they're paying effectively comes out of the savings and doesn't cost them, then actually it, it, it becomes very acceptable. <laughs>